face is good. But the camera too close. No. <laughs> the makeup looks terrible. That's true. <laughs> Keep it far away. And it you know, I, I added some Vaseline to the lens, like season one RuPaul. <laughs> there you go. Oh my god. Everyone yeah. looks better. Oh. My husband is like interested in the puppy thing when I was like, because I, I was like, what on earth is that all about? And so I remember going to CC's for their fetish mm -hmm. night. They, there was a whole bunch of puppies there. And so I was like, honey, you got it. Because we, we had never gone. And so I said, you need to go to fetish night. He would like it. After that, he was like, <laughs> put a collar on me. <laughs> but he gets into dressing up like he oh. like he plans out outfits. Leather people are exactly like drag queens. They are, they are like drag queens. Hello! Hello! And welcome back to What's a Safe Word. I'm Bo. And I'm Honey Bouquet Girl. She's my special guest. This is day eight. Eight of the 12 gays of Christmas. And I wanted to talk to a drag queen who does so much good stuff in this community. I'm a Honey Bouquet. I am a drag queen here in Seattle, Washington. Uh, I'm a, a rapper, part-time hoe on Aurora, very infamous up here in Seattle, so oh. <laughs> like to work that street. How else am I going to get these Forever 21 outfits? Got to go with the flow. I go with a heavy flow. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a song about that, actually. Oh, do you? Got this dress that's made out of tampons. It's like a flapper dress. Oh, that's so beautiful. You're a, a rapper extraordinaire. Yeah, that's that's how Miss Honey was born. Started out as a, I was a musician and, you know, just as a regular boy. My producer said, let's do some, like, more electronic stuff. And he sent me this track and could not come up with a melody, but it was a really good track. I'm like, I could see this being a rap song. I was like, how can I do this? So I was like, why not I do it in drag? That's how you got into drag? Yeah. You're just like, By I, want, I want my music career to okay. go into like drag. Were you always like interested in drag? No, yeah, I mean I dressed up a couple of times and then this just totally came out because of the music. Oh, I was a hot mess when I started. I literally just threw on the Walgreens makeup and just went out. I've done that before. <laughs> Everyone has to start somewhere. Yeah, you know? no, I'm ready. Foundation and Cheetos and then you're ready. There you go. I love the bears. I want a bear with a nice cut and a big like the Goldilocks of them. Yes, yeah, so a lot of my songs, that's what I deal with. I think bears are the sexiest men around. And I came out in like 94, mm -hmm. and like finding bear porn was like almost impossible. Everyone was like hairless, skinny, like just either muscly or just a twink. That Nothing was your else. options. It was like Catalina Falcon. They're all, only ones I could find were like Jack Radcliffe, Hank Hightower, Ooh. Zach Spears. I love my Jew bears. Oh. Uh. Those are the, give me one that's got glasses, just big beefy furry. Uh. I know Jew bears. Yes, yes. <laughs> oh God, yeah. Don't, don't pop that tongue. You also talk about having a son. Does he know? Does he know? Yeah, he does. It, it was a, it was kind of a process of like letting. He was probably well, he was two when I started when Miss Honey started happening. At first, you know, I, I would go get ready at like the venues where I was performing or at one of the fellow performers' houses. I always go to work in drag on Halloween. I've done. This one year, I was like, you know, he's probably not even gonna see me. I'm just gonna go right in the house, walk up the stairs, go take a shower, and everything. So sure enough, I'm like rounding the stairs, and my son's coming down. And I don't no. say I don't say anything. <laughs> was that Papa? He's like, no. He's like, I think that was Papa. He's like, no, it was some weird lady with a lot of makeup. <laughs> we didn't like try and instill any like st you know stereotypes about this is what a boy no. should do or whatever. That's He's good. just naturally kind of gravitated towards that. He kind of didn't know what to think of the the Miss Honey thing. It's probably weird. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. well. As he's gotten older, he's like totally. Mom, can I go to your shows? Yes. <laughs> So I'm coming out, gosh. So I was married to a woman. Whoa! Yeah. <laughs> I grew up in a uh, conservative Assembly of God Christian home, which naturally, oh boy. which naturally would mean I would eventually become a gay. First sexual experience I had was like in eighth grade. Oh. I think I knew by the, when I was in fifth grade. I remember watching this. It's so ridiculous. Silver Street with Richard Pryor oh and, and Gene Wilder. And there's this scene where Gene Wilder's in, like, they're on the train and he's with this woman and yeah. she, he's just, he's, he's the furry guy. And she's like rubbing his hand and his chest. That just to me, I think that's when it like kind of solidified. How old were you? Um, 11 okay. or 12. When I started realizing I was gay. Like, yeah. I just, I didn't come out until I was like 18 and sure and ready. Like all throughout high school, I was like, peer pressure is hard. I'm yeah. gonna date women. <laughs> and then I did women and dark time at like 11 or 12 I just gotten my first computer I just figured out how to get on the internet and start like searching things up 
and I definitely typed in big dicks a lot and <laughs> naked males. You guys had it so easy growing up. One of the websites I clicked on gave me a virus on my computer. <laughs> so we bring it to the geek shop with my parents. <laughs> My mom is there. We we plug it in, the guy restarts it, plugs the computer into a monitor, turns it around, and he's like, let me go to Google really quick and help you search things. And I'm like, this is when Google first got that search history bar. Uh -huh. The second you clicked on it, and like, there's a list of them that's just like naked males and big dicks. I'm like, the virus did, I swear! Did you ever get caught with porn while you were a kid? No, but I did get caught with condoms. And this is so many, I was like probably in like seventh grade yeah. and you know I wasn't having sex or anything but yeah. some some kid like gave me these condoms. I put them in my, my pants pocket and I wasn't doing my laundry yet. My mom did them and they like came out in the wash. <laughs> my dad comes up and he's like, son, do you know what these are? And you're like, balloons! <laughs> they were, you know, being the conservative Christians, they, they like just yeah. wanted to avoid that whole time. Oh, what is the biggest gift that the LGBT community has gifted you? Accepting me for who I was. Yeah. Going through high school and even in college when I grew up, you know, I always felt like I had to hide and couldn't be who I was. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'll never forget going into my first gay bar and just being like, wow. There's like this instant feeling of acceptance. I didn't have to like, I knew I didn't have to, you know, try and hide, not that I could, not that I did, I was very successful at hiding. There was no fear of like, oh, is someone going to bully me or say, like, mean things to me. What's your safe word? My character has way more sex than I do. <laughs> Phyllis Schlafly. <laughs> that's, mm, uh, that's boner. Perfect! Tell us how big your hair is. <laughs> in the comments below. Remember to hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe to What's the Safer and we'll see you next time. Bye! Bye. I, I forget how long it took me. I, one time I just went in and got it because I wore like all manner of different wigs and then when I wore this one so many people commented so I'm like okay that's the hair. That's the hair I'm getting.